Okay. Arsenal versus Man City. Today in the charity shield, what did we learn? Well, the match started off um, more so in the sense of what we're going to, I think, see probably from the first few weeks of the season. Um, it usually happens. Some rules or regulations have changed and then sometimes they get adapted or not. But we saw some yellows. I think it was Party who got a yellow card for kicking the ball away. And the commentators did say that the teams have been instructed about certain things that will change and uh, I think it happened to hours later on in the matches uh, and the commentator said that the players are used to it even though they uh, know the new rule they're just so used to just maybe just standing on the ball and just tapping it away and stuff but I think that's going to be an automatic yellow card from the start of the season but we'll see how long it lasts um, players might suddenly get used to it or they might just continue to use, do it and then you might just get loads of pointless yellow cards in the match um, so I think um, Arsenal Man City will uh, have probably that the first 25 minutes I think and the way they were set up sometimes it looked like they were playing a 4-2-4 you had like Kovacic and Rodri centrally just uh, moving across and then the other four well four defenders four two and then the four attackers almost in a line so it's kind of interesting to see how the teams are going to play this season because I think there's a lot of teams and a lot of managers now obviously uh, they say that Pep has a lot of influence uh, throughout the leagues but there's even like uh, with inverted fullbacks, a lot of teams might start copying that. But something even today, uh, the goalkeeper, Man City's goalkeeper, not holding on to the ball, but almost standing on the ball like sometimes Brighton's defenders do and just waiting for that press. So that way you can almost push another player higher up the pitch to affect the opposition so I'm quite looking forward to this season to be honest because I think there's going to be a lot of interesting things that teams are going to try and um, it's going to be interesting to see so yeah like I said I think Man City dominated the first about 25 minutes and then Arsenal start coming into the game a bit more and just writing, uh, looking at what I've got written down here. Um, Arteta got booked as well. And that's another thing about Arteta. I get his passion. But could that start affecting Arsenal as well? Um, I think last season I was saying as well that the, the way he's behaving when the running comes, it could have a negative effect on the team just how much just how vocal he is and just like like he's with his actions he's very kind of like dramatic and he's got quite a young team still but obviously they had a very young team last season and how does that influence the team when he's behaving like that so I think that's something that he has to look to as well. obviously he's still a young manager but especially in the title runnings and later on during the season when the pressure is on you I think the manager has to show that calmness and like authority that he's in control of himself as well because when the pressure is on players crazy things can happen in certain moments of the match so if the manager is transmitting that almost like he's out of control it might lend itself to the players so he got a yellow card and um, yeah, I think um, Havertz had a chance in about the 25th minute as well uh, with the cut back from White and Havertz saved it down low, no, Havertz took the shot and Ortega saved it and then the follow up I think was blocked by Stones from the shot by Martinelli so even though I think uh, Man City were dominating it was Arsenal who had 
you would say probably had the chances to score clear cut chances um habit got a uh, yellow for the trip on the halfway line as a on John Stones and I think I think that has to be a yellow card as well. I'm not sure if it would have been a yellow card last season but the ball's gone and he just tripped him. So I think not right depends how how much veracity is in it. But if the ball there's no chance of the player getting the ball and he's just fouling it even for like a tactical foul. I think maybe in the future something can be done for that because if you're out of position and the opposition has that advantage, you should get punished. I know he's got a yellow, but it should be probably possibly more severe. And obviously, if it's a reckless challenge where they're diving in from behind just to um, make a tactical foul, it could be a red. Because, like I said, once you're out of position or your team's out of position, that's almost like a, a tactical thing where you've made a mistake and now you're covering that mistake by stopping the attack so I think most people would rather see goals in football and um, probably a lot of goals do get stopped like that so something that I, I hope to see anyway anything like that yeah, give them a yellow um, what else have we got down here so just um the ball from Odegaard to uh, Saka and the pullback for Havertz again it was um, down Arsenal's right so that through ball from Odegaard is a dangerous one to Saka because he can go either way as well he can run in behind you and take you down the line and cut inside and have a shot like um, I think he did in the first half when the shot went wide so that was another one and then um, Rodri had an attempt from the halfway line and to be fair it wasn't too far away that wasn't so that was um a great effort from Rodri and then I think it was Alvarez down the right not sure if Martinelli gave it away but Martinelli was the one who was tracking him back and there was almost a chance at one stage you thought it was going to be a penalty but Alvarez has pulled the ball across but unfortunately for Man City nobody was there and um Going on to the second half, there was a great turn from Odegaard on Kovacic as well. And then um, Stones header straight at the goalkeeper. A uh, few subs. Then what did we have? Um, chance chance for Arsenal from the low cross from Ben White again from that side. And then um, Palmer had a shot blocked from the right hand side, which should have given him. Um, a little bit of an idea of what was to come from him and then um, what minute was the goal in for um, Man City so that was the 76th minute when uh, Cole Palmer scored and I can't remember if it was De Bruyne or Foden who got the actual assist but it was a fantastic turn from Foden who did he leave behind I think it was Thomas Party and fantastic turn like I said from Foden in his own half to start that move and it was a great finish from Cole Palmer and he's a very interesting player Cole Palmer because he's good he's got a good ball retention obviously he's comfortable on the ball and he can travel with the ball as well and I think he's got a goal in him he's got a good shot but he's quite tall for what kind of play he seems like kind of like a dribbler with the ball as a it's you look at him and you think it's quite it's, it's a different um body type but profile maybe a player but with Mahrez gone he should get more of a chance I know in the post match interview you were saying talking a bit about the future and maybe possibly they're still alone but um I quite like him I think he's quite um, flexible in how many positions he could probably play as well. But he's a very tidy player. I think Cole Palmer is. And uh, it'd be interesting to see how much game time he actually does get now. And then um, 
just moving on. I thought the Bruin looked a bit rusty. Obviously, th that might not be too much of a surprise because I don't think he's played any preseason games. So that was his first outing in preseason. Or oh, well, his first bit of football I think since the season's ended. So a little bit rusty, and we'll get onto him a little bit later as well about his rustiness. Um, he almost. De Bruyne, when uh, Ramsdale made a mistake from the kick out, I thought he could have made a quicker pass as well, De Bruyne. I think there was an opportunity for a goal there, but he didn't release it quicker enough. And then the injury time was eight or so minutes, and there was um, a clash of heads, wasn't there? I think it was uh, Walker on party again. And then Arsenal have scored the equaliser, and it looks like, I think it was Trossard, I'm not sure, was it Trussard with the corner? So the corner's come in, it's been cleared, and then no one stopped. I don't think, no one, I think it was Alvarez who guys have closed down quick enough. And then, um, obviously, Trussard got the shot off. I think it's got a bit of a deflection of Alvarez first, and then um, Akanji it's trickled in the goal, and then it's 1-1. And then obviously there's no extra time, so it's straight to penalties. And uh, obviously Arsenal on the high then, because they've just equalised, so the momentum's all with them. And Odegaard scores, De Bruyne misses, hits the hits the bar, Trossard scores to make it two 0 Then Bernardo Silva scores a nice penalty, so it's two one. Saka slots one in, three one. Um, Rodri misses and then Vieira finishes off with a really good penalty as well. So Arsenal end up winning. So I think obviously Arsenal needed the win more. Uh, it's quite an even game. You can't say one team really deserved it more than the other, I don't think. Uh, but I think obviously Man City will be really disappointed with conceding that goal right then. I thought they were inviting that pressure almost and it's something with all this extra time that will be interesting to see again because the top players are the top players especially when they've got confidence so if there's like and I'm not sure if that happened to Man City today as well whether you just get lost in how much extra time there is because you don't know how much is being added on etc so you don't know whether, how long you've got it, say, for keeping the ball to run the clock down or what. So it's going to be very, a few things are going to be very interesting to see, I think, like I said, um, this season from the teams and just generally in terms of the rules of football and what's going to happen. Are we going to see a lot of yellow cards at the start of the season for uh, kicking the ball away? Uh, Arteta got a yellow card, I think it was because he was signaling, signaling himself. Uh, for a yellow card for somebody so obviously players have been told but it might take a bit of time to get used to it so how many um, yellow cards are going to be accumulated at the start of the season and then add up into suspensions and stuff um, what else yeah the injury time obviously you you think it would favour the top teams because if they're losing and they score top team's confidence and they're always likely to score another one quite soon after so if you're getting 10 extra minutes like every match maybe even how much minutes does that add, add on to the season or to your players and also just thinking about it how, how does it affect your substitutes because sometimes, obviously, like before, you'd bring on a late substitute and you might only get a few minutes. But now, say you bring on a sub in like the 88th minute, he could play like still another 15 minutes of the match. So you think, obviously, it's going to favour the bigger squads, the, the teams with the most quality. And something I was thinking about, about the, the style of play as well, which teams... It's going to suit. So. It's, like I said before at the start. There's lots of different. Even tactical. 
variations and um, the way the teams are set up to play, which is going to make this a really interesting season, I think, because there's a lot of teams that are going to try and do similar things, I think, especially the top teams, the, 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 the tactical manoeuvres are going to be quite similar. So it'll be very, very interesting to see uh, what happens. But yeah, like I said, that that will be very interesting, that injury time, because even like going to matches as, as well, if, you, if you're late for the train or your coach, how long are you going to stay in the stadium? You know, possibly there could be 15, 20 minutes if, they, if what they're going to do, if they stick to it, there could be that much added time on in some matches. So, I think you can only wait and see how it affects the games and then see whether they change the rules as well after a bit, whether it affects it too too much in a negative way. Because if it does, then they'll probably look at it and think, all right, this ain't going the right way. But yeah, interesting match. Man City versus Arsenal. I think I was saying the other day in the other podcast, I expect these two to finish in the top four. I don't think, I think this was the first victory that Arsenal had over Man City in about nine matches. So it will give them confidence. Uh, Kovacic playing for Man City. Obviously Guardiola they've signed. Uh, Rice was playing, Timber was playing, um, Havertz was playing for Arsenal. So even then, Players still bedding into the systems. Uh, Man City Kovacic is a different player to Gundogan in that he's not going to get into the box. I don't think like Gundogan had that knack of uh, making those late runs. But Kovacic is very good as well in ball retention. Uh, he's good on that half turn making the acceleration. I think he had a move in the second half. Oh, he done it. I think it was the second half anyway. Uh, where the ball just got run out of play. And Arsenal as well. Timber done quite well. I think Rice obviously should be a good player for Arsenal. He should only improve as well. Playing with better players than playing in the Champions League. So moral victory I think for Arsenal. I don't think they could say they deserve to win that game. Like They were, they were so much better. But obviously penalties... So, Somebody's gonna run well, in a match, somebody's gonna win, but pe- it's the one on penalties. But I think Man City is still gonna be too much for Arsenal. But obviously, confidence is a big thing, and now Arsenal can go into the season not with that confidence behind them. But uh, yeah, football is back, or should I say? Should I say that because a lot of people have been saying the World, Women's World Cup has been on so why do people say football is back? But let's just say the Premier League is back next week. Well, even not even next weekend, this Friday, Burnley versus Man City. So I think that's going to be a tough game. Tough, tough game for Man City. And we'll hopefully do a couple of podcasts during the midweek. And we'll do one after the Burnley match as well, I think. Um, I think if Man City get a draw, it's not a great, great result. But first match of the season away, uh, Burnley's ground will be kicking. I think a draw for Man City, if they get away with that start of the season, will be alright. So yeah, thanks for listening and we'll catch you soon. Have a good week.